Ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome to this week's episode of Critically Casual, where for some reason, we decided to do our things at the last second here, where we're running a little bit behind, and Dev's still not here, but you know, whatever. We've got a show to put on, damn it. Hi, Chasing, welcome to the show. Um, oddly enough, I walked in put on my headphones and heard that the music was ending and I was like holy shit I should get here quickly because I was like could you imagine the show opens and neither of us were sitting at our seats don't get me wrong Dev's not sitting at his seat because I murdered him in the Hunger Games and um clearly I, I'm the survivor I'm the best there ever was and ever will be but uh yeah, <laughs> welcome to this week's episode, where uh, once Dev's done doing whatever the hell he's doing over on his side, he'll be with us in a moment. But uh, yeah, we're watching the Hunger Games. This week I've called it the Game of Hungers, because I'm really excited for the show. Hey, there he is! He finally comes back! <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up, man. I had to pee. Hi, Dev. Welcome to the show. Oh, say hi, Dev. Fuck you. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Fuck you! There we go. Oh. Hi! See, look how well trained he is. He says hi. Fuck, 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 fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> so, Cunt. it's Hunger Games week, Dev. Which, hey. like I've said, I've called it the Game of Hungers because I'm excited for Game of Thrones. But uh, we watched the Hunger Games instead. So. Um, anything you want to talk about before we hop into uh, discussing these movies today? Uh, not off the top of my head. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. So, Stuff in your face over there? Wow, real professional of right? you. Right? Yeah, I was hoping you had more to say while I took a bite, but you really didn't. <laughs> you should think about those things. Mm -hmm. When. when Usually, if I have something to say early in the podcast, I let you know before the podcast. Good point. Touche. But I haven't eaten lunch yet, and I was hungry. All right. Let's hop into the first movie, then. Um, Hunger Games. So, you were telling me before we watched these movies that you... Or after we watched these movies, you really weren't feeling these? Well, I didn't feel these... So, <laughs> funny fact, I've only ever seen the first one of these until this weekend. Oh. Fun. <laughs> So, Reason being is because the first one didn't hook me. Makes sense, makes sense. Still hasn't. I actually, I went through and watched this again. I really enjoyed these only because they were two hours long where the first hour was character development and world driving, like developing the world. And I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. I like this. But uh, the actual like fighting and stuff like that itself... Um, not really the best. And especially, dude, the cinematography in this movie, the first movie here, is god-awful. Like, the first half an hour, which I can kind of understand, it's, it's, it's all handheld shaky. It's like someone's holding a cell phone, and it's a windy day, and they've been holding, like, 20-pound weights for a week straight. So it's like, hey, I'm filming a movie here. She's all stressed and anxious about what's happening. <laughs> and that's the first half hour of the film. And then they decide, you know what? Let's show her in action. Let's show her hunting. And then it's like, she's standing in a tree. Here's nine different shots from seven different angles of her holding the bow and arrow. <laughs> like, Actually, Steven, I really enjoyed this part of the film. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> not really honestly it's rough um i will say it's nice that they got thor from thor ragnarok into the movie um which is pretty cool uh he plays gale um if you don't get that joke it's a layered joke okay mm -hmm. do you need me to explain it to you sure explain it to me dev well, i'm just making sure you get it no i don't liam hemsworth who's Chris Hemsworth's brother, plays mm -hmm. Gale in this film. Mm -hmm. But he also played Thor in Thor Ragnarok in the play... As Thor? Yes. Okay. Layered joke. That is a layered joke. Congratulations. It's also like... 
the Loki joke with um, who plays Loki in Matt Damon. Matt Damon, who also plays Loki in Dogma. Oh yeah. yeah. Fun fact. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go. Thanks, Dragon. I knew someone would appreciate that joke. Someone would get it. Someone likes Marvel more than Steven does, so someone will get it. Yeah, someone out there has to appreciate it. Um, (laughs) I was actually, oddly enough, I really liked Kato, I believe was his name. The um, bad guy, the antagonist. uh, Played by Alexander Ludwig. Otherwise known as uh, Bjorn Ironside, if you've watched Vikings at all. Which I have, and it's a good show. Kind of melodramatic, but a good show. All the same. His name was Bro, uh, Bjorn Lothbrook. Well, yeah, Lothbrook, but his own father calls him Bjorn Ironside because in battle oh. he went without taking any, like, any wounds. And it was like his first battle with the family as an adult. Okay, fair. I haven't watched the show all the way through. No, yeah, it's a good show. Fair enough. This just this this movie is just. It's. Uh, I like it a lot. I'll be honest. Like, but I there. also understand that it's kind of boring and pretty slow, and the action's not the best. And there's a you lot... know I hate you. What's that? This movie is almost nothing but exposition about their world. It really is. I'll be honest. <laughs> that that's some of the worst parts of this film too or like there'll be moments like when they cut away from the action to have um to explain like what a tracker jacker is i hated those those were absolutely stupid Can we talk about that as well how the fuck does she know what a tracker jacker is she's like watched, what she's <laughs> she's watching no but like games. well no but like his explanation of the tracker jackers mm. mm-hmm. Cause in her vision in that scene she sees him explaining it. Yeah. But there's no way she heard him explain it. No, yeah. Because she's in the game. That's for us. So. <laughs> but how does she have it? I don't fucking know. This movie cinematography That's one of those things that's terrible. just like, it's a, it's a huge inconsistency for me. Also, with the scene where she's uh, she volunteers and, like, plows through one of the, the peacekeepers, mm-hmm. it cuts real quick to her being behind the peacekeeper again. I'm sorry, but I will notice those small inconsistencies if you're not blowing me away with the rest of the film. Yeah, it, it's... So you're saying its continuity is off. Yes. Okay, I can agree with that. Continuity issues, which become glaring issues if you don't, like... Hook um, me? No, I get you. Um... One thing that I really hated was the super heavy-handed foreshadowing that kept happening in this film. Like, continuously, over and over and over, it was just all foreshadowed what was going to happen. It's like, there was a movie I watched recently where there was a shaman. And the shaman could predict the future. And everything he, anything you'd say to him would be like, I foretold that, and I foretold this, and I foretold you to be like that and that's kind of what this movie felt like to me it was like you'll be okay prim don't worry you'll be fine everything's gonna be a-okay absolutely no problems whatsoever and then we all know what happens well those of you who don't don't but you mean rue well there's also rue she says the same thing to rue later on in oh the to prim okay yeah. right i forget that she has a sister because she's the the with Rue too. I hated this part in the film with Rue. Like she was a great character herself. Like just the small like little tidbits that we see of her. She's definitely cute. But that's all we get to see is we get to see a cute little girl. We don't know her importance at all in this movie. We don't get to see her relationship with Kat, uh, Katniss at all. But we get to see this huge emotional scene when Rue passes away. But you know. Also, passage of time inside there sucks. Yeah, there's absolutely no way of telling how much, how time has passed in this movie. Except for, like, the uh, the two announcers who are watching it the whole however long it's been taking. Yeah, well, and the thing is, too, they have so much control over what happens inside there that it, it, it partially breaks my illusion. 
because we see outside of there too many times. Mm -hmm. Like, there's too many cuts where it's nighttime inside the dome and not nighttime outside of the dome. Yeah. You you don't like the behind-the-scenes stuff. You don't like the world building. You want more I don't just, mind um, the world building, the but when moments. it just it breaks the moments inside that we're supposed to attach to. Okay. I can... Because if they, like, they say that there's two days to pass one of the, during one of the scenes, right? Yeah. That's that's a genuinely valid complaint there. Many A lot of movies have that problem where um, when you're in the moment, say like horror films, when you're in the moment with the deep, dark tension, they're like, oh my god, this is so exciting! And then they cut away for some something else for somebody who's walking through a forest. And it's like, well, that just ruined the whole mo mood of the film. So... Well, and that's the thing, like, this film, it breaks away, which I'm fine with it breaking away. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It breaking away isn't my problem. Because those are so that we can, you know, understand the world we're in. <laughs> um, but the problem is... We don't... Like, we don't understand what how much time is actually passing. Mm -hmm. For all we know, it could have been just a day. No, you're right. It very much could have just been a day. Um, but no, we know at the very least it's been at least three days because Katniss is there's a moment where Katniss has been passed out for two days. Two days inside the dome. Yes. Which are probably far shorter days because we have like five days inside there. Mm -hmm. It's very possible. I mean, they do say that they bring and during in one lights. point did, when they cut to uh, what's Woody Allen's character. Um, they uh, cut to him outside of it, right? And it's daytime, and they cut back, and it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. So it shows that the inside the dome has different times, and they actually show the sunset happening, right? Yeah, like they, they speed it up and all that so that they can hurry up the games. They don't really show... I think they do keep a consistent clock, but they just don't have it... They're just really bad at keep showing us time as it progresses. Like, yeah. we show... So like for, we see for all we know fall asleep twice or three times within the first hour. Or second hour, because the first hour is all story building. So, like, yeah. in the first 20 minutes of her being in the dome, she falls asleep two different nights, supposedly. So Yes. Plus the two days that she's out, which means another two nights. Mm -hmm. Plus, well, we see her fall asleep three times. Yeah, there's... Once at the start, second time where there's the fire. I think that's the second time. Unless th it's also the first time. I think that's also the first time. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there's one day when she, then there's another day when she's like two kilometers away from anybody else. Then she runs back, and then there's the other night with the the the, the, the... everyone below her. Yeah, and then that's there's... three. There are three times. Yeah, she falls asleep three times, and then she's out for two days, and, and then, then she, she falls spends, asleep... like two days with Peta. Yeah, and then the end of the Hunger and they... Games, and then the night that the Hunger Games ends. Yeah. So, but for all we know, it feels like. From what it looks like from the outside perspective, it looks like it's only been like two, three days. And that just, it's disorienting, is mm -hmm. the best way to put it, when you cut in and out. Like that. Do you have a favorite character at all in this movie? No. Like, not at all? Not really. No one really, like... You don't even like the drunken Hamage? Hamage is alright, but he doesn't do much, you know what I mean? He like he's supposed to be a mentor character, but he doesn't really do much mentoring. No, he he's more of the like working behind the scenes guy than he is a mentor. He Which I'm okay with, but it's not gonna make you my favorite character. No, yeah. I just liked his snarky attitude is all I liked about him. And I think my big thing is I've read some of the books. I haven't read the books all the way through. I've read one and two though. And Okay. I really like the books, and I like the lore in the world of the Hunger Games a lot. But when you look at it compared to the movies, like there's a lot that's missing. And that's probably part of the problem. It's yeah. missing a lot. It's quite a bit. There's a lot of things that are missing that aren't in there. But then that's also apparently what I've heard. The problem with the th the third and fourth film is that they break it into two films. Yes, they add more, and then people are like, "Why? Why is the last one two films?" 
We all, I blame Harry Potter. But um. Well, yeah, but that one made sense to break into two films. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest. It, it, you can only get away with that like once. In, in in Hollywood, that's one of those like. Everyone tried to emulate that, and everyone's like, eh, "That's not gonna work." Yeah, they tried. But um, so I actually had a question for you. Um, okay. When this movie first came out, there was some backlash for um, our main actress Jennifer. Name blank Lawrence. Me. Lawrence, yes. Um, she got some backlash because she people thought she didn't fit in with District Twelve. Uh, there, but she also it was a mixture of backlash and empowerment speeches because at the, this time District Twelve was supposed to be a like very starved group of skinny people who could barely who are barely getting by and people thought that she didn't fit in she looked too healthy you know quote unquote and behind the scenes it's because she refused to lose weight for a role she's like i don't feel like i should have to do that kind of thing so, um and it became very much like empowerment towards body figure and um it was a movement towards that at the time but it was also like controversy of her not committing to her role well enough in the film um, I want to get your opinion on this if I've explained it well enough. Uh, I mean, I'll turn it into a subject that's going on right now. Okay. Do you, do you, you know what I mean? If they're not forcing you to do something, which in which case they probably shouldn't. And if you don't want to do that, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, cause like not everyone's going to be goddamn Christian Bale. Yeah, no. Um, not everyone wants to be Christian Bale style of acting. And by Christian Bale, I mean just his acting style of just, like, he has destroyed his body. He goes from method... The two, there's two main reasons... Main, there's two main modes of acting, which is method acting and Meisner acting. And he switches between both of them, but he's, he chooses method for the weirdly extreme roles. Like... Yes. I.e. Vice or the one where he uh, loses all the weight. Yeah, Machinist, thank you. But then he goes straight back into Batman after that film and gains a bunch of weight, like, mm -hmm. and muscle mass. Like, it's 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 un it's ungodly healthy, unhealthy. Yes. Um, but, I mean, not everyone wants to do that, you know? So, it's, it's, <clears throat> like, some, like, some, like, some changes, like, uh, you know, like Chris Pratt, you know, Working out for Star Lord makes yeah. a little sense. Stuff like that is a little bit different. Like That's... working out only kind of benefits you in as if you're doing it correctly mm -hmm. um, and healthily. But there's a difference between that and like you need to be thinner, you know, hungry looking. Yeah, like, like there's definitely a difference between thinner and starved. Yes, and I could. I mean, see... Chris Evans for. Uh, Captain America lost a lot of weight. Yeah. I could kind of see both sides of the argument because there were moments in the film when I was watching her and I was like, huh, she's got a nice little double rounded chin at times. And it's like, she doesn't really fit into the world of district 12. However, I also, she also can hunt. Yes, exactly. So like, she's got skills to survive in that world. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very much like a give and take in the moment, and I just wanted to get your hot take on it, on the situation. Yeah, right. I have I have nothing against her not doing it. Like, Does, do you think if she looked thinner at all, like the slightest bit thinner, you would have been more of like invested in the world? That's just a completely in the role. Not quite the role, but like a little more invested in the movie, like. Were you at oh, all I taking said, the... I didn't know if you said world or role. World. No, that doesn't no? change my opinion okay. on the world. It's just the way the world... This film is that it is a teenage drama book. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of one of those things that's just like, I'm not... I'm, I'm, it's a little... Even when it was out, I still wasn't a fan of those kind of films. Or fighting kind of movies. Okay. What this one came out in what 2012? 2012. Yeah, 2012. What that was either my end of junior, beginning of uh, senior year. Yep, that was because I graduated 2012. 
Yeah, March 23rd. This came out the day after my birthday, I remember now. Um, and it just, it wasn't appealing to me. It didn't really appeal to me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and it still doesn't. It's not my kind of world. It's just, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. And if you like it, you like it. Like, I'm just saying it's not for me. This is also why I'm the casual. Uh, I've, I'm enjoying the comments. Um, you know, while I partially agree with Dragon that there's a lot of things where, like, women are used for their bodies in movies, there was, I don't think that really happened in this film at all. Like, don't get me wrong, there are definitely moments where it's like, hey, look, she's wearing skin-tight clothing, but and it's her walking through a forest, but I don't think they were intentionally trying to make, make it so you could oogle her body farts in this film, so... Well, thankfully there's that I mean I'm sure if you looked carefully you could see them throwing angles where they're like look at her butt but I wasn't really looking carefully I guess and then as for the method actors thing like um it's it's just tough like I method acting is very much a, a hard way to go because you tr- you try your best to kind of turn into that character and depending on what the character is, it could really mess with you. Yeah. But some of the best method actors get the most money and the best roles, and um, eventually they just might kill themselves by overdosing or whatever. So it's... (laughs) I personally, if I were to be an actor, and any time I've acted, it would have been Meisner, where the whole point of Meisner acting is you put things that have happened in like in your life and you try to relate them to how they would relate to the character say like if a character's dog dies you want to relate it to either one of your own pets dying or something other tragic loss like if you're a musician like if your character was a musician and they lost their guitar uh relating it to like you when you were young and you lost your pet goldfish or something fair i mean and the other thing too is there are some people who just go to to such crazy extremes. Like, Daniel Day-Lewis is one of the most nutty character actors mm-hmm. out there. Like, because he's, he's not just a method actor. He's a character actor. Mm-hmm. He immerses himself into the role. Like, when he was on the set of Lincoln, people had to call him President Lincoln. President Lincoln. I like that. <laughs> because he was, he was immersed himself into the role. Mm-hmm. So, like, there, it's just, it's just, it's, it's an extreme, um, depending on how far down that road you go. Because it, let's be honest, there's a little bit of method to all acting, of course, depending on what you do. Um, but there's an extreme to it that some people want, but not everyone wants to do. Yes. Okay. So, so, so Hunger Games. Um, is there anything else in the first Hunger Games you want to talk about, or? No. Is it just time to decide how many popcorn kernels out of ten you would give it, Dev? Out of ten? Out of ten. Out of ten. Yeah, you have ten popcorn kernels. How many? How many of those would you kernels. give to uh, this movie? For me, I'll just give it a seven. A seven? That's more than I thought you would give it, honestly. I'm not, it's not a bad film. It's just not my film, but I I can appreciate what it is in some light too. Mm-hmm. It's my uh, my stepmother. She was watching this movie with me a little bit last night, and the way she put it was, I could see the appeal for a lot of audiences, but for me, it's just not my cup of tea. It's too depressing, or for her, it was too upsetting to think about a pre a post war world where they killed children for sport. To keep people in line. Like, that was too depressing of a concept. That part didn't bother me. I don't know why. It didn't bother me either. But but... then again, I play a bunch of Battle Royale games, so I'm just like, you know, I'm a crazy person who's... Yeah, we like murdering people just because. Yeah, that's what video games do to you. Um, (laughs) Joking aside. um, No, my problems with the film is just that it's just not for me. I'm not a teenager who is rebellious, I guess. I wasn't ever really a rebellious teenager either, so... 
But Katniss isn't really the rebellious teenager. She She's the rock in her household that keeps them steady because her mom has not been there. Ow. Yeah, but she, as we discussed in the next one, she starts it. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I too would also give this seven popcorns. So, this solid seven. It's just, there's... I enjoy this film because it does spend a little bit of time developing the world, but it does too much for some things, like Rue and Tracker Jackers and all this other stuff, and not enough for others. Yeah, One... well, like, they explain some of the people that you're going to meet in the ring, and everyone else they don't explain, you're like, okay, they're dead. Mm-hmm. Like... That's seriously how it is. Like, and then there's this person, and this person. We spent a little bit of time with these people. So they'll be important. We've got these... No one else matters. Yeah, basically. So, there... And it's because I'm... I know that they explain all the characters a little bit more in depth in the book, but they just don't have time for that in the movies. In a two-hour and 12-minute film. Yes. It's long, dude. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so let's hop in to our next film then. The sequel to Hunger Games. Uh, Hunger Games. I just got done watching this. Yeah, the Hunger Games catching fire. So tell me about this, Dev. You told me you, you had to go to a doctor a little bit and then you had to watch this film. And yeah. something tells me that going to the doctor and then watching this film, it was exactly the opposite of what your doctor would have hoped you did. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's like it's like don't put any stress on yourself. Don't think about anything silly or stupid, and then you're just sitting here watching a movie that's like well, that's I don't like this I'm silly, having. stupid movie. <laughs> that's not what caused the problem that I was having. Okay, <laughs> fucker. Um, no, this is uh, I watched this actually while I was in the at the at the doctor's oh, office. Okay. There were, you know, there's times time. where you're just in there. I was like, you know, I might as well start watching it. All right, time for this part. Cool. Cool. Some more watching. Back out and continue watching it. If I hadn't, I'd still be watching it probably right now. Because yeah. I got home around 10, so I'd probably be watching it right about now because I still needed to eat. Anyways. That's... Yeah, this one just feels longer. This one feels longer, yes. Um, it's not much longer. No, it's pretty much the exact same length in time. However, there's not nearly as much action. It's a lot more. This to me is like, uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It's, it's your stereotypical, like middle movie where not much exciting happens, but it's develops to lead on to the big. I'll counter that with a Baskalis. The basilisk in this in Hunger Games was the lightning bolt destroying the Colosseum. Okay, <laughs> fighting a giant snake for like half an hour is far more entertaining. True, but nothing else in that <laughs> film happens. Like, there's nothing else in nothing that. Nothing else that's happens really in this film. We get a a lightning bolt is a second, Stephen. A second. Dev. <laughs> okay, sure, fine. Harry Potter's more entertaining than this film, but I was just trying to correlate it to another. Way to I know, example. I was just going to say that I wanted to say that Chamber of Secrets is better, okay? Sure, fine. <laughs> now you're just... Uh, time uh, uh, Wrong argument, Dev. <laughs> I know. Doesn't mean I can't say these things. Dobby! I've got a sock. Oh, there's probably a sock somewhere over here. <laughs> so... My dirty clothes pile. I've got a sock. Yes. Dobby's got a sock. Dobby is free. Yeah, Dobby no. Dobby is free. No, so. I'm a free health. Yes. Now shut up, Dobby, so we can review Hunger Games. A free health. If that was oh, supposed I don't to be. A free health. There you go. So let's say, if that was supposed to be auto tune, it's not there. <laughs> I have the auto tune on, just not the FX on. So. <laughs> Good job, Dev. So, with this movie. It was definitely it definitely felt longer. There was no like big action in this movie. It was all character development. It was all character moments. It it's was all set up. Yes, it's all set up for Mocking Jay, the Mocking Jay movies, part one and part two. 
Which is a... So, this entire franchise... I, I, I've correlated the problem with this franchise. Okay. The first three films are setups. Sure. I would say my big problem with this franchise is that they're very much tonally different. The first movie is all about... That's also a problem, it's, I can agree. It's a survi- the first movie is a survival film. That's yes. true. Second movie is a propaganda character, like, political film. It's like... It's like Star Wars Episode One, And then... <laughs> Actually? Kinda. Yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the third movie, Part oh, Mocking Jay Part I had One. I a bad thought, though. Uh-oh. I don't want to say it. Go ahead. I'm probably more entertained by Episode One. I could see that, because these characters aren't really all that entertaining. We have Peta, who just loves Katniss and wants to take care of her. We have Katniss... Who's suffering from PTSD, and very? I'll say this: it does. It, not that PTSD is consistent. That's not what I'm trying to say here. But ha- like, what happens is very inconsistent with her. Mm-hmm. What triggers what, and like, what sh- happens? I don't know how to put her. it. It just it doesn't feel like there. There's good portrayals of PTSD. Look at Iron Man three. Actually, mm-hmm. like, if I'm gonna relate it back to Marvel, that's where I'll go because, it, it, like. Iron Man 3 does a good job of portraying that with Tony Stark dealing with the fact that he died and went into space. Um, This film does it in a way that it almost feels gimmicky in certain aspects. Okay. Like when she shoots the arrow at the turkey and then uh, Marvel from the uh, first, uh, from the the 74th Hunger Games shows up. It, I don't know how else to put it. Because, like, it, I don't... It, it's not... And I'm not someone who suffers from this, so I can't say it is or isn't, but it doesn't feel like how it's been described to me by people who have had it. Mm-hmm. And by descriptions of people who have had it in, like, you know, documentaries and booking up stuff about PTSD and stuff like that. Because, I mean, I, I look up mental health stuff because, you know, something that interests me, and it's good to be aware of these things. Um... And it just, it doesn't feel correct in some elements. Mm-hmm. Like, I think a lot of that is just, once again, there's more in the book than there is in this movie. Like, this is still a two hour long film, but there's a lot two of... Two hour 26 and two, instead of two hour 22? Yeah. Like, there's still a lot of um, underlying things in this film that weren't really related like correlated like a big message in the books for the second movie is um for the second book is wealth compared like wealth in the capital compared to in the districts which they kind of talk about it a little bit in both the movies there's like a scene yeah there's a scene about it in this movie in the second movie and then there's like kind of just the shock of them being in a place that they're not expecting to be for um, the first two films, but that's that's really about it. It's just like, but there's there's not as much with the wealth undertones. There's a lot of like PTSD and anger that's not related or, or correlated because everybody in the seventy fifth Conger Games, the third quarter quell, knows it's Katniss's fault that they're there. They all know because of her that they have to fight again. So they're all angry at her, but we don't get to see that in this movie at all, actually. Because Yeah, well, and because we find out that like half the te- half, almost half the people there already want to join up with her. Yeah. Half the people which, there have a plan behind her back about her. So Which is really it, it comes off really obviously almost from the get-go mm-hmm. that that's what's happening. Um like it, and and the thing is, there's other th- other characters that we don't even meet that are trying to help them. Yeah, like we get brief moments of them, like the uh, the morphers. Yeah, the morphlings. It's just the yeah, they're just a throwaway in this. But we know they tried to protect me. Why? I don't know. Yeah. Well, oh wow, that's sense. a weird moment. What's going on here? But um, yeah. and part of it too, and. Honestly, I mean, Philip Seymour Hoffmore's in this, which he's the late, great dude. Philip Seymour Hoffmore. He's still... Dude, no Hoffman. matter what he does, I'm going to love him. Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. But, Hoffman? Yeah. How, How I say? Hoffmore? Hoffmore? Did I? Yeah. Ugh. 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but um, dude, he honestly the the moment where we get introduced to his character in the dance is my favorite moment in this film, just because there's actually tension and you could tell with the tone and like the music and stuff like you don't know what his character's up to yet. yeah but just the way he talks is like you inspired me to volunteer to be the game master again again and then that's the end of the conversation like it's like dude this guy is a menacing man who is here just to murder people yeah and it's awesome it is genuine like philip seymour hoffman is genuinely my favorite character in all of the hunger games i wish he made it to the last two movies but he didn't he well he's just a great actor overall mm-hmm. let's be honest he, he well he was one of our favorite parts from one of our favorite mission possible films also true like also true he's just he's good he's so good he's the late great philip seymour hoffman mm-hmm. exactly so we get him and his awesome character. We get a lot more of President Snow, which I liked President Snow a bit, yes. but like he seems like the perfect evil dictator to me. Knows yes. how to play the cards behind the scenes. But at the same time, we all kind of know something's not right. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's almost laid on a little too thick. Mm-hmm. Especially with what happens with Cinna. Like, yes. the designer. He, what happened yeah. what, with his arc in this movie was kind of a little heavy-handed. But it was good, all the same. Very foreshadowy as well. From the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. So, that's honestly a big problem with this film. It's just, it's very foreshadowing but not in a good way like it's not like other films like with us how the one throwaway line describes the film and more than you would expect like or even in in like other franchises like uh, marvel usually if you're setting something up it's background it's not the foreground like for instance endgame people think namor was hinted at in endgame yeah well, he's been hand-to-hand since the first Avenger, potentially, mm-hmm. if you if you pay attention. Or, no, since Iron Man 2, you pay attention. Yeah. Um, but, so, but it really, it's one of those things. In this film, it's not, it's not nearly like that in this. It, it's very much the foreground is what's to come. Mm-hmm. It's very much a, hey, we're setting this up. Please, stay t- please watch us build. Mm-hmm. Which... No offense, is not what I am here to watch a film for. Um, I enjoy world building. One of my favorite franchises has a lot of world building. But they do it in a way that makes the world build upon itself while telling a story inside of it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like, the world sort of starts building itself piece by piece so you know certain things about the universe that you're in without the characters in the film knowing everything. And they have a story inside of it. And they build more themselves to the universe. Yeah. Through their story. Their story changes the universe. Modifies it. Makes it their own part of that universe. Best way to put this is the Guardians of the Galaxy were completely disconnected from everything. Mm-hmm. And they told their own story. But we understood that their story was connected because we know about the stones. But they didn't know that the stones were all on Earth. Pretty much. Yeah. Like... Yeah. But that's the thing. We had those build-ups, you know? We had those background build-up m- notes. I mean, there's also... they also, Marvel, we take for granted that Marvel had 10 years to build up a fair. lot of their stories. So, well... And that's fair. Yeah, go ahead. In all honesty, I think we're still... We're going to do... I'm going to say what we said about uh, um, Mortal Engines. Mm-hmm. It'd be better as a series. Yes, a, I a, a TV series. I don't know why. Like, I know you hate me when it comes to exposition, because like, in in the longer, more story, character driven movies, I love minor exposition and like world building exposition. Like, 
when Katniss is walking away in the first movie through the forest and she walks out of the district zone to go hunting, and like that tells you a lot about the world that they're in already. But yeah, it's, but that's it's, showing, not telling. Yeah, exactly. That's the kind of stuff I really enjoy. And there's a lot of that in the first movie. But then there's also a lot of the whole, like, them just blatantly cutting away and explaining what's going on. Or yes. things like that. Like, hey, you need to get sponsors. This is what a sponsor is. This is how you do things. Mm -hmm. It's all about being a friend. It's all about being likable. Like, and they don't show you them doing this. Yeah. It, the only time we ever get to see them, like, getting sponsors quote unquote is in the first film with Hamish because he is sitting there and he's watching as Katniss is suffering from her burns and he's like I've got to do something and you know what he does he parties it up with people like hey man you liking what Katniss is doing I am too drink drink you should send her something as a sponsor drink drink yeah man like that's the only thing we get to see sponsors wise and there's more in the books but <laughs> yeah that's the thing there's only like we if throughout the two, first two books we only get two sponsor things mm -hmm. two well we get to see three in the we two in the first movie and one in the third what's the other one in the first film the it was uh first it was the healing stuff for her the second time it was soup, soup. yeah okay right right forgot about the soup which I actually really enjoyed the soup message because she kisses him, then they fall asleep, and then a few hours later, I su I think they don't really explain it well. The th the the drop comes in and it's a note that says, "You call that a kiss from H," <laughs> and it's a bowl of soup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like you're putting on a show. Remember that. The more spectacle you put on, the better chance you have of survival. Yeah, true. It's like um, SOS, the video game. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> that brings up hate or hurtful moments in my life that are now gone. Or good moments in my life that are now gone. And hurtful. Some people sucked in that game. Um, I remember stream sniping you in there once and you were so excited and like angry and it was interesting. You're like, God damn it, Steven, buddy. Hi. Help me, but god damn it! <laughs> it was a good time. It was well played. Um, <laughs> I will say that. Um, but it was... It's one of those things that just like... Yeah, I honestly think like, SOS did it better. <laughs> like... Yeah. It was... It, it was that's, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, I just... I don't know, man. It just did not... It doesn't hook me. This book, this movie still doesn't hook me mm. after... It's the first time I've seen it, and, like, it's the second movie, and I'm not hooked. And I'll be honest have... with you, the third movie is nothing like these next two. Like, In it's... good or bad way? It's a little bit of both. Like, it's no longer being... It's still survival and trying to do political stuff, but it's now them as they're exploring and trying to evade the capital while going through different districts, and it's just all-out war. Like, genuine, like, just bombers and, like, things blowing up and them trying to do political behind-the-scenes espionage, and it's both... I haven't seen the fourth film yet, but I know the third one's not my favorite. Fair enough. In fact, in the books, between the first one and the second one, the second book's my favorite because we get so much exposition and storytelling about Hamish and his story because, like, we know nothing about Hamish other than he wins. He's the first ever District 12 winner and the only yep. District 12 winner. Um, what we don't know in the movies is that he won the 50th year, the, 20, the second quarter quell, and that year was they took twice as many people. So they had 48 people in the dome instead of 24. And Hamish won because he didn't actually kill anybody at all. He did what Katniss did and he hid and he like survived. And the way he won is the person he was partnering with double like betrayed him at the end. And they made it towards like the dome at the very end, which is important in the second film. Um, where whenever you strike the dome, it, like, explodes and electrocutes you and shoots you backwards. What happens in the book is she throws, like, an axe at Hamish. He ducks, it hits the dome, bounces back, and kills her. And he survives, being the last one to live. 
Damn. Yeah. And it's like... That's a, that's a more entertaining movie right there. Exactly. Like, the 50th quarter kill in Haymitch's story... The, the second quarter kill, the 50th year in Haymitch's story, is so much cooler. And, like, we only get to see one character moment where Haymitch is, like, freaking out. And that's in the first film when he's watching two kids grab a sword and start fighting each other. <laughs> And he's just like, oh, two kids fighting. I can't deal with that. And that's the only time we see that. The rest of the time, he's just a drunk bastard. But in the books, he's much more. All right. <sighs> Read the books. You might actually like the film a little bit. <laughs> or you'll hate see, it I, more. I, well, I'll probably hate them more because that's one of my problems. I read Aragon before the Aragon movie came out. I just thought the Aragon movie was bad, and I've never read the books. The book is so... It's good. I like the book. As a fantasy book, I enjoy it. The movie is Garbo. It's probably... It, <laughs> honestly, it may be a movie that gets me as angry as Death, as Death Note. On an honest level. So, it's one of our fallbacks. Shut up. It's a shut donation up. goal on the channel. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> Um, it's, <sighs> this film just doesn't capture what I think it's trying to capture. No, it like, it does fine with what it has. It's, it's very much a teen film. Like this is yes. a teen novel. <laughs> it's a teen film. And during the teen film era, where yes. Twilight and Divergent were, and uh, Maze Runner were strong. Box office wise, the last movie you're throwing me off a little bit, but Maze Runner. Mm -hmm. That's another team like story. I'm trying to double check what movie. Okay, Maze Runner. Okay, I've not seen Maze Runner. That's why. Neither have I. Same with Divergent as well. So. Same with me. <laughs> so. Dev, yeah. we've we've already kind of spoiled both of these films quite a bit. They've been out for five years. I, th I think I think I think we get a pass. I think so as well. But now we don't really have a good spoiler section to go into. Well, we can talk about it in greater detail. I True. mean, after you give it some popcorns. True. Okay. So you have ten. I have ten popcorns. So yeah. for the spoiler section, I want to put these two back to back against each other so you know just kind of comparing them against each other and for this film i would probably give it is your internet good okay, it's yeah. it's a little okay. slow it's it's chopping up okay. a bit right now okay um, i just want to make sure cause, uh, yeah, i saw it uh yeah that. okay there might be another lag spike here in the stream in a second but we're fine now and um okay. i if i had to give this a, oh, fucking, a couple of popcorn kernels I would probably give it um, six, this one, six and a half at most, because I was it, just gonna give it a seven again. It's it doesn't do it doesn't it my opinion of it doesn't change. Well, like it's not nearly like it's not as cool as the first movie. Like the climactic moment with the with if the you second take it film, alone, I feel like it's fine. But if it's part of the series, well, even if you take it alone, it's still not that good because it's just set up. Yeah, it's just a. It's yeah, I gotta give it a six. Yeah, it's just not as good. <laughs> Maybe a five. Honestly, I gotta give it a five. Okay. Think about it. It's just set up. So a five from you and a six from me. Yeah, it's seriously just set up. It's there's there's for me and that if your film is nothing but set up, which is a problem we've we've talked about because we've never actually reviewed Batman v Superman, but we've talked about Batman v Superman quite a bit. Mm -hmm. That's one of the problems with Batman v Superman is that it's nothing but set up. And Martha's. Yes. <laughs> but that's one of the problems. With that film. This has those problems. Yeah. So, if we didn't scare anybody away during the first half where we had a handful of spoilers, we're going to dive even more into spoilers and discuss both of these films. I only have spoilers for Hunger Games catching fire up, but we're going to spoil both, I feel, here. To discuss Fair. a little bit better. So, 
I don't even know really where to begin. Like, it all just boils down in this. It's just, they they need more exposition, but there's not enough room for the exposition that they need to make the moments that they have better. Like, like we said in the first... They movie, put in the wrong exposition. A, a little bit? Like, there are definitely times when we did... Like, in the beginning of the film. We definitely didn't... In the first movie, at least. I'm going to talk about the first movie real fast. Um, just the regular Hunger Games. They definitely didn't need um, 20 minutes of her hunting and talking to Gale and dealing with her family before the reaping happened. Especially when they had, like, her just standing and walking in a tree. And they had... I literally... I sat there at first and I watched them do this. And it's like, okay, she's walking across the tree. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve cuts. Twelve cuts before she even re- pulls the bow back. And it's like, okay, one, two, three, four. There's a deer. Oh, the deer can smell her. Five, six, seven. Deer walks away. Okay. <laughs> and it's like that they could have easily gotten away with. They could have chopped a whole bunch of that out. Sped that up quite a bit. Got into the reaping. Did that much faster. And then they could have had moments where, like, Rue, when Rue dies, and she's like, all we get to see in the film is Katniss passes out. She wakes up with leaves on her, and we hear that Rue has been protecting her for two days. We don't know what those days. two days, yes. We don't know what those two days were. Uh, we don't know what the extent they went through together was. And then... Then they come up with a plan. We don't know how long they were together before they come up with the plan. In the middle of them pulling off the plan, Rue dies. And then she holds this huge, like, eulogy where she's burying Rue with flowers and the flower bed and all that stuff. And it feels like it should be dramatic, but it doesn't really pay off because we don't really know who Rue is. And same with all the other characters, like... The very first film, we hear about maybe five or six that might be a problem. The careers are what they're called. And yeah, then, the, uh, the, the one, two, and three districts. Yeah. And then... Um, then in the very beginning of the film, when the Hunger Games actually start, 12 people die right away. Like, just instantly, just 12 people are dead. And I'm like, oh, cool. That, that was fast. Yeah. So... There's just not a lot of... And it's all the middle districts. There's... N- if you pay attention to it, it's from three to nine who dies. Mm-hmm. That whole chunk. People all in there. And it's just... They're, they're, they're just all dead. Like, yep. they don't... Uh, they just don't matter. And the movie tells us they don't matter. And then... They don't tell us about them. It's like, it's like in zombie films when you see a character pop up and you don't know their name. Or... In, in 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 great wide shots, if you have two or more of the main characters there in a big battle scene, and there's a third or fourth person there that isn't one of those, they're the one dead. Mm-hmm. They're the red shirts. Yeah. And then they also do the exact same thing in the second movie as well, when it's like the morphlings. They, at least in the second movie, go through each one of the districts a little bit more. And they're like, these are from District 1. These people are the career path. These are for District 2. They're also the career path, but from a different district. These are District P. These these people won it this year, and this person volunteered with this person. These are District 5. These are the morphlings. They're completely ineffective in combat they are no problem this is district six and like well, they don't go over district six um seven they go over seven a little bit was that the two that they met seven was joanna oh yeah you're right joanna okay but yeah. they don't they don't show us joanna and like her partner in the they little just show joanna during a scene where she's being extremely crass it's a it's a good scene I enjoyed the shit out of that scene. Uh, yeah, it was very funny. Every, in all honesty, that scene's acted the best. Yes, because all of their facial reactions, all of them there, it's are perfect. genuinely hilarious. She's being crass, and she knows it, and she's owning it. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Lawrence it's, has the best facial expression ever of the... Yeah, it's just like she's visually like, wow, you're just... Okay, where's... All right, okay. Which, Jennifer Lawrence's that face is perfect, Mm-hmm. It, it, like, it, it's it's one of those things that like, 
I, I, I would bust up laughing seeing her do that. Um, and Woody Harrelson and, uh, what's his name? Uh, the kid. Uh, uh Peter. Peter. Uh, Josh Hutcherson. They're both, they're, their expressions are being like, huh, kids. Yeah, they're genuinely like, yeah, this is nice. Thank you for the, Good the ride. thanks for the <laughs> conversation. Let's have it again sometime. Thank you. Oh, that's Joanna. She's from District 7, by the way. That's what I thought was hilarious as well. In this, like, Hamish had so much more background knowledge and more one-liners in this film, for sure. Yeah. And, well, and that's how you introduce a character. Like, she makes a statement in the film. Mm-hmm. She's, she's one of the characters who you know she's going to be important because she just does those kind of things. Yes. And that's the same with, uh, what's his name? Uh... Krennic. Krennic. He, I was a little iffy on. Like, we only get to see him as a character right before the chariots. Yes, but he still makes a statement by actually having, like... He makes a statement because he's... He, you can't tell what side he's on. No, yeah. I, my favorite thing about the whole... His whole conversation with her is, like... Hey, Katniss, do you want a sugar cube? It's supposed to be for the horses, but when you see something sweet, you gotta snatch it up, right? And, like, he, that whole, there's a context there. He knows that they've been lying the whole time. He's about PETA and Katniss. He knows that that's been a lie this whole time. That's kind of yeah. what he's alluding towards. And then at the end of the conversation, he eats the sugar cube himself, and he's like, huh, cube snatched. Like, it's all very much like, he's a smart character, but we don't really get to see it. <laughs> No. Until the, until we're in the ring when he's at, he actually does things pretty well inside the ring. Dude, um, yeah. Into the dome. And I loved his protection, like Mags. I loved Mags. Yeah, that was sad. Mm -hmm. I'll admit. But she's just, she's the mute old woman. How can you not be sad? Like, everybody knew she was going to die, even Hamish. And, like, he's like, well, when she dies, I hope it comes quick because she's genuinely a nice lady. It's like, damn, <laughs> that's emotional there. There, that was that was the point where they're like, Hamish is a character that we're supposed to kind of like at this point in the film. He's one of those who's like kind of mess. So if he, uh, yes, this is the one where they do have the pregnancy scare as well. So, but um, to drag the one that we uh, that the audience is not really gonna buy into. <laughs> and by the um, audience, you mean us. Or President Smo Snow? Well, not just that, but... I mean, the the, the audience itself was, um... The audience... We're talking about us. There's no way we would ever buy into that. No. we know. It wasn't supposed to be for us, though. It was supposed to be I know, for the but it just still crowd. comes off as very cheesy. Yeah. It's, once again, it's them trying to do the personality things. Like, everyone in this quarter quell is upset. And because this is the first time they've ever told, like, been told, hey, you have to come back and fight again. Yeah. So everyone's upset. They want it to cancel, so they'll do whatever they can. And I think they get away with it. Like, if in the very beginning, Pre Cap uh, President Snow didn't say no matter what state of health or age that they're in, they are a contender for the fight. Um, I think if he hadn't said that, they would have had to have canceled the games. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's one of those, like, moments where I'm like, I mean, we already know they're going to have to go into the ring. I mean, do we really need this? I is it in the book? Uh, which part? Sorry. The scare? Yes. All right, that's still cheesy as fuck, then. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just is. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, they want to do whatever it takes to get the show canceled. The games not work. And the audience who's there watching them all is like, yeah, stop the show, but they can't. So, it's just, it's just how the law works. <laughs> Except Also, Sinna's... Did yeah, you... Just... Go is ahead. he, is he killed during that? We don't really know. Uh, we see him get beaten up and dragged away, but we never see him again. So I'm just under the assumption that, yes, he does die. I'm trying to keep it within the movie for this part. Um, I do believe okay. he dies, yes. Still kind of lame, because it's just an off-screen death, then. It's, it's supposed to send a message, though. 
It's. I mean, you it's, send it's, a message by killing him on screen. They killed him. They essentially brutalized him in front of Katniss. That was the message. It was you spoke up yeah, against me, and then you know, brutalizing only goes so far if the if she thinks she's he's still alive. I don't think she thinks he's still alive though. Like she even mentions at the beginning of the film, like he will kill us. Like she knows that anybody related to them is going to die at some point because of her. So I don't know. Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe I don't know. Let's ask the person who wrote the book and then talk to the director who adapted it into a movie. Eh. Yeah, we got that power. Absolutely. Us and all of our um, fifty watchers right now. Uh, <laughs> fifty thousand. Exact. There you go. Anyways, no, it's this movie just doesn't. And. These films just, it feels like nothing but build up. Mm -hmm. So. With no actual legitimate, like no real payoff. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, like, cool, the lightning bolt thing. Cool. But, like, the games themselves. This, What did you think of the characters in this one? Like, did you like any of the, anyone else any more in this film than in the last film? Like. Uh, I liked one, Philip's character. Um, Hamish has a little bit better. In this one, and Fennec, <laughs> and uh, and the girl. Uh, fuck, what's her name? I liked no, Beatty. Oh, what's her name? Beatty's cool. He's he's not my favorite, but you know he's cool. Yeah, I like um, him, but he's not my favorite. Yeah, well, what's her name? We just talked about her. Fuck. Joanna. Joanna. Yeah, I just saw her name on the list, so I, I just got there when you said it. <laughs> um. But, like, some of the new characters I actually enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Newer introductions. Um, Katniss is still very... A wet blanket? <laughs> yeah! She, she has the least development in these films overall. I would, like... Which makes it tough to feel that she's your protagonist. Yes, somehow... This woman, this girl who, like, doesn't really change as a character at all, is the spark of the rebellion. Through accident. Yeah, she she doesn't know how it's her, but it just kind of happens, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And part of my problem with that, too, is that she just doesn't do much to change. Maybe she changes more in the next two movies, or books. Uh, book, but I haven't experienced that yet, mm -hmm. so maybe it makes it better. Um, but just from these two films, she's essentially the same character from the beginning to the end, just with some trauma. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way I'd put it. And then when it comes to like fighting in this film, like in this one, Catching Fire, there was. The beginning action scene where not much happened. No. Um, a lot of the fighting itself went from like the tension of being hunted down to the uncertainty of what's going to kill them in the map. Yeah, which isn't hasn't it's it's a cool concept. I will say that it's like the like, movie. The Q. clock concept is awesome. If there was a battle royale game that had that kind of idea. I'd, I'd be awesome with that, you know? Um, which, actually, there's one that kind of does that with, uh, what is it? It's similar to Hunger Games style. Uh, I have it downloaded somewhere. Minecraft Hunger Games? <laughs> no. Um, at least I thought I had it downloaded. Uh, Darwin Project. Oh, yeah, I have that, too. We just I downloaded that to play with you, but then we it's never free. got enough people to play just, it. No, yeah. <laughs> at least it was free. Yeah. Um, but it, it has that concept where if, like, one person can dictate what happens throughout the game. Mm -hmm. um, like, what zones can go out, it, stuff like that. I feel like you would like Westworld. Probably. Because that's honestly what a lot of this film had me thinking of. I was like, man, this reminds me a lot of Westworld. Man, I wish I was watching Westworld right now. Like, HBO has some good shows, guys. Westworld is one of them. <laughs> Fair. Fair. 
I probably would enjoy it. It's probably right up my alley, honestly, with westerns and sci-fi, which is two of my you would definitely two of my things. I may like westerns, you know. It's not like I have a fistful of dollars poster up anywhere or anything. It's not um, like you played all of both the Red Dead Redemptions. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Not on stream for the first one. I'm sorry, guys. So, like, I want to talk, and but yeah, that's just the map kills you more, and that's about it. And then, honestly, when you think about it in context of the film, like. The center spinning island and the writing around that was kind of silly to me. Like, let's yes. see how well they tell time now. Well, the landmarks are still the fucking same, so... Yes. Like... <laughs> My immediate thought was, the tree's still up there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did you move the tree? Did the tree go somewhere else? No? Okay. And, and it doesn't make sense to us, the audience, in the moment, but it makes sense at the end... If you like, if you're paying attention and you see Philip Seymour Hoffman at the end of the movie, like I was here to help you this whole time, and it's like, oh, he make it look like he was trying to get everybody killed, but. Well, my other problem too is they tell it's a clock from. The, if you're paying attention and you hear the twelve, and she says the twelve districts, my mind was immediately like, no, that's a clock. No, he literally says midnight. Huh. Yeah. Like it's and she's like, like, no, it's the twelve districts. It's genuinely right, hit, right then and there. It's like, yep, that's a clock. No, it's not a clock. Yeah, oh, tick tock, tick tock. It's a clock, guys. It's a clock. <laughs> I'm surprised Finnick didn't go. No fucking shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. I said that. How fucking dare you? Max would be alive. <laughs> But it's a cool concept, like the zones each having a different thing that happens in them. Dude, like the Jabber Jays, the whole like birds that are the screams of people and people that you love too. It's like that's genuinely terrifying. But yes, but how do, they're supposed to hear those screams, right? Mm -hmm. It was just it? the people in the zone could hear it. For some reason, this was the only zone that you couldn't leave once it was activated. It was supposed to psychologically kill you, I guess. Like, yeah, break was, you down to, yeah, it was supposed to, to make it so you couldn't that. leave. And, and break you down. Yeah, you'd probably want to kill yourself to get out of it. Which is rough, dude. That's a fucked up zone. Mm -hmm. But still, like, it's completely different than the other zones. No, and each one of them was very unique from the other. I like the monkey. I like the flooding. I like this poison. The poison fog was weird. Only Very because inconsistent. They can, yeah, only because they can instantly wash off the welts that they grew. Yes, and also very inconsistent with the fact that, like, sometimes you can walk through it and sometimes you couldn't. It depends on how much is covering you. And also how much, uh, where you are on screen and how much the CGI they've told you is going to be there and how much they actually put is there. Like, there's a couple times during the fight with the monkeys that, like, both Katniss and Peeta swing, and there's a monkey, like, three feet away. And I'm like... It's to keep them away, Deb. They were gonna charge at them if they didn't swing right there. But they weren't... There. It was just sitting there like, let's go. But it's not attacking them yet. It hasn't even moved at them yet. And Peeta just does this, like... He has a sword in one hand, and he swings with his fist. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> The monkey's not near you. Yeah, that's what a continuity issue there that you noticed, Dev. No. <laughs> Congratulations. I know. I notice these things when the film is not, like, drawing me in completely. <laughs> There's probably, like, some of my favorite films have some continuity issues that I just don't notice because they're films that just draw me in. Mm -hmm. Draw me in, I don't notice these issues. Well, I may notice those issues, but not as well. Or they won't affect my viewing of the film. So now we know. Now we know. <laughs> so I haven't really got anything else I want to discuss. Like, did you like the ending of this film at all? Like the with the lightning bolt destroying the dome. It was really predictable. I mean, they only showed the lightning happening two or three Four times. times. <laughs> enough enough times to be like, this is important. How many? T when does it happen? At twelve and at midnight and noon? 
Ah, okay. The end of the conversation, BD? Yep, that's it. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Pretty much. The lightning bolt just becomes obviously important. And when, uh, like, and the point when they start to do the thing where you obviously know something's up because they have Katniss and Peeta separate, and they're trying, like, they're trying to intimidate them without being too intimidating, and you're and immediately, like, during this entire thing, I'm like, all right, so something's going on here. Mm-hmm. My they're question... Obviously... What? Like, at the end here, it looks like BD is trying to kill Katniss and Joanna. Is what it looks like. Right? Eh. Sort of. But at the same time, if you pay attention to everything else that's been going on, you know that's not what's going to happen. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Because there's enough context clues to be like, these people are obviously up to something that Katniss doesn't know. Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't seem to be bad. So, fun, funny thing. Chasing just brought up something that's kind of funny. Um, eyebrow talkers are very much a thing. And oddly enough, you know, you know of Kyle Hill, right? From Nerdist News? The guy who does Because Science? Yes. So, he started his own YouTube channel through Nerdist, the Because Science channel. And there's a weekly... I'm, I'm a follower. Yeah, and there's a weekly video where he does, like, live correction updates. I I think I was one of the top comments one week because I mentioned that Kyle Hill is an eyebrow talker. And, like, every time he's like... What's an, it's like... What's some, it's like, let me demonstrate as best I can. It's like, so yeah, th this happens, and then it gets really exciting, and then, yeah, and then... And it's just like their eyes are moving this whole See, time. I talk with my hands. Yeah. That's what I do. So I'll notice when someone talks with their hands. I do that too sometimes, but it's with a lot of people. It's just like which, and by the way, funny fact about eyebrows. this podcast, I fought with Steven to have a bigger box because I talk with my hands. Because mm -hmm. the box used to be here for yep. me. It used, I used to just it have used to be this. smaller than what I have right now. Like I keep it very tight for myself because I don't want people to see my moves here. But <laughs> but he he moved it from this. To it's, down to here now. Mm -hmm. Which is perfect for me because I can talk at least here and you can see my hands. Um, my, the, especially depending on how I'm postured the, at the time. The reasoning behind it was for visual consistency. So we'd both be about the same size. And yeah. But no, I'm not going to show you the moobs. As for his uh, Patreon I, uh, backers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, you know what? If we... It'll be a donation go. I'll I'll have a sexy no, guest calendar. No, stop. Stop. <laughs> We're done with this. Anyways. Um, news? I guess we should move on to news. Uh, which one of the two that I brought did you want me to go over first? I mean, I didn't have anything, so... Um... I feel one's a better discussion, one's a better... We need to, uh, something that we should discuss. So we should probably do the thing we should dis should discuss first. Is not as much of a discussion. Is it Mayhew? Yeah. Okay. Uh, over this, uh, during this last week, uh, Peter Mayhew passed away. Um, he, if you don't know who he is, he played Chewbacca. I'm one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. I have a stat, a uh, poster for Chewbacca. I have a figurine of Chewbacca somewhere. It's probably put away in a box at the moment because I didn't have anywhere to put it with the rest of the figurine stuff that I have up. Mm -hmm. But Chewbacca has been one of my favorite characters the entire time and Peter Mayhew brought that character to life for me. Um, Look at and that, it's... He's... Look he, he brought he brought the the walking carpet to life and I can't thank him enough for that, and he will be missed. Some of the some of the stuff that you saw over the week that week two were really touching. Like uh, JJ when he wrote his tweet about it, um, the Peter Mayhew account I think is run by his family now. Um, posted a picture of every time JJ wrote a me message to um, um, Peter. I go ahead. They, he, Peter kept those framed. Mm -hmm. I really in, in like a shelf. I really enjoy, like, George Lucas's comment at the bottom of the article for him. And it was, Peter was a wonderful man. Uh, he was the closest any human being could be to a Wookiee. Big heart, gentle nature, 
And I learned to always let him win. He was a good friend, and I'm saddened to see his passing. And I'm saddened by his passing. Like, it's, 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 it's sad when such a kind, generous soul passes away. Especially one who creates such an iconic character and brings it to life for us. Like, helps bring to life such a huge... Um, such a huge figure in what we pop culturize today. So, it's... Yeah, I mean... Yeah. He he, there he was, will he, he will live on with a great legacy. Absolutely. Thankfully, he taught um I can't remember who played Chewbacca in Solo. In Solo? But yeah, he did teach. He did yeah. teach somebody else how to like move and personify as Chewie. So we still will have the ability to see Wookiees and Chewie in the future through the person he taught. But uh, Jonas uh, Satumo. Yeah, Jonas. He, he's a, he's also just a tall dude. Mm -hmm. Who is? Uh, he actually did play uh, Chewie th in Force Awakens as well. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, he uh, was in Force Awakens. I think that's when they he him and Peter were both in that one as Chewie. I believe. I believe Peter was in this one as well. Okay. I'm checking, yeah, Peter Mayhew's on there. Yeah, I could see that. Just. There was definitely... I read a bunch of news articles when Peter Mayhew passed away. And a lot of them were mentioning... They said things like, uh, Fairly well, uh, goodbye Peter, Peter Mayhew, the one and only Chewbacca. It's like, that's not 100% true. But, but he is in a lot of people's it, hearts. It, yeah, he's, the one and only Chewbacca in our hearts. <laughs> he's, the, he's the original trilogy Chewie. Like, <laughs> he will be missed. Absolutely. But then, moving on to a less somber uh, news story, the other one is the only other thing that I thought was worth talking about this week, and is that Sanic. 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 So originally we had a different thing planned for this. We were just gonna talk about the trailer. Mhm. Mm um, but that changed. Yeah. During the week. <laughs> like, we were gonna like. I, as everyone, as some people know, I don't like watching, reading trailer, watching trailers because I think they ruin things. But some movies, it's okay. Sonic would have been an okay movie trailer. And it's right here. It's, we can totally still watch it and react to it live on stream for my first viewing of the trailer. But just don't play it with the music because, uh, it's a gangster's paradise, man. Oh, God. It's the 90s, bro. The 90s were cool back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why Gangster's Paradise? I don't know. I, that was... Oh. Because it's one. the 90s, man, and that was when the Gangster's Paradise was awesome. I don't... I, that's that's not what you associate with that. And, and let's be honest. I, did, I ripped on the trailer in private. Mm -hmm. Steven heard it a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, But... I don't exactly feel they needed to redesign it. I, at this point, feel as though something's up. Like, don't get me wrong. This movie's coming out in, what, a few months at this point? November. November? Like... A few more than a few months. I feel as though this Sanic, this really ugly Sanic, was intentionally bad the whole time. Like, to drive in people's notice of the film? Mm hmm. Are you saying they're doing guerrilla tactics in marketing? I think so. With controversial marketing? Yeah, there's there's something that I learned in move in my film school is that there's no such thing as bad publicity when it comes to a movie. And Fair. this is one of those instances where this is genuinely god awful and if they thought that that sonic was actually gonna be passable to people who like sonic then they are sorely mistaken and clearly they got that because they're going to fix it but still like i honestly think that because of how willing they were they're like yeah we'll fix it don't worry we've heard your feedback yada yada blah 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 there's absolutely no way that they can render in a new sonic that easily so I think that they had it planned this whole time. Maybe. But they might have had a backup at least, depending yeah. on audience reaction. 
Like, the other problem, too, though, I have, if they don't have it compl a pre-rendered one, is that those fucking goddamn animators are get goddamn crunched again. Absolutely. Oh, oh. Like, it's oh. gotta be rough. <laughs> it's just, it's bad, man. It's genuinely really bad. Like, yeah. But thankfully, like we said, they're, they're changing it. Is it because... It's just how do we explain this, Dev? How do I how do we talk about this? Do you are you upset that there's going to be a different Sonic, or do you want to see the genuinely awful Sonic movie? Or I mean, part of me did. I did too. Okay, <laughs> because we would have had fun with a genuinely bad Sonic film, and it's still probably going to be a genuinely bad Sonic film, just with a more Sonic-looking Sonic. What my big question is: Which shoe company is going to get the big public advertisement in this movie? Still Nike. Nike. Okay. He already has the Nike shoes. What they'll do is just make them bigger. <laughs> He'll have Instead to special order a size, Nike shoes. What, whatever he was wearing, a size three. It'll be a size twenty three. <laughs> what? Instead of a size three child shoes, it'll be a size twenty three clown shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna give him twelves, but twelve uh, or E's. <laughs> I'm just more worried about what the other animals, if they show up, are gonna look like. Like, do you think there's gonna be an echidna? Yeah. Knuckles the echidna. <laughs> it's it's. Oh. Yeah, he's definitely ja channel. And he is Jim Carrey is definitely channeling straight up mask and Riddler vibes from it. Oh yeah, that's definitely a ma what the hell? I'm looking through trailer cutscenes. No, um, okay, Jim Carrey, I like you. Sonic. Have you not watched it yet? No, I haven't watched it yet. Okay. Sonic has lightning powers. That's cool. Good mustache. I liked it. Well, I'll say the sound. Some of the sound effects are perfect. Um, he definitely doesn't look like Robotnik until like the end tra of the trailer. Do you oh yeah, though the rings are portals. Okay. Well, because Sonic's not from our world, is he? <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. That helps. That helps. Things make sense now. <laughs> no, they don't! The rings aren't portals, Steven! They're portals now, damn it! <laughs> That's not how this has worked! Sonic has established stuff! And they're just like, hey, now those rings <laughs> that are his life, they're now... Um, how portals. Sad, how sad is it that money is life in Sonic? Capitalism. <laughs> I'm Eggman. <laughs> Oh god, look at him! Oh, it's bad. No, it's not bad. I, I Eggman is fine. The Jim one isn't bad, but that motherfucker, <laughs> that motherfucker right there, that motherfucker right there. Sorry, that motherfucker right there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. I, I'll be honest. The more I see him, the less jarring he is. A little bit. I'll be, that's probably how they were with it, too. Like, when they first saw him, they were probably like, oh, but as they worked with it more and more, they're like, yeah, it's not. Like, if you cut... Uh, the off. face is fine. It's when you see the rest of his body yes. that it gets worse. Like, that right there where you don't see the teeth, the eyes aren't super beady looking. It's like, when you see that. Like, when you see his full body here. It, it becomes an issue. Because <laughs> uh, he's very human. <laughs> it's it looks wrong. Like that image right there doesn't look terrible. No, not I'm in the truck. Like it's it could be better still. Like it the hair is a little off putting, but it's better. That's not an awful shot because you don't see his lanky ass fucking arms and his weird torso. <laughs> like, the torso itself, I think, is the worst part. Come at me, bro. <laughs> The torso makes it the worst, because his torso is, like, super just lanky, which isn't what Sonic is. He's supposed to have long legs, weird, like a weird oval body. There we go. There's a good picture of it with a bunch of missiles and stuff flying at him. 
Yeah. Why is why is why are the robots from Portal? I don't know. Like those look like they could be from Portal Two. I know. They're Eggman's robots. Okay. Sure. But he just doesn't look proportionally correct. No, he really doesn't. His legs are too long. His arms are too short. Well, they're either not so... long enough or they're too long. Like, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> These pictures, man. Look at that Sanic. That's not a bad picture right there. I mean, it's a little weird. The nose... Oh doesn't... my god, I know what it looks like! What? Where Sonic? Where Sonic? Where Sonic? You're not wrong. Oh, Sonic Boom. <laughs> One of the pictures here. Oh. So. You were disappointed by that pod, weren't you? Hey, look, in the back of the machines <laughs> look like toasters. <laughs> oh, I hate you. I know. The back of these robots look like toasters in this picture. Like. You know, it's probably a joke in the film. Oh. You know it is now. The kids film, Steven. That's why he's Eggman, because he's always having e eggs and toast. Right fist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. You need to stop. <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't know what your problem is. It's it's just rough, though. <laughs> <sighs> like, I don't want the design... Like, I don't want the animators to go through Crunch, because Crunch is awful. But damn, <gasps> did Sonic just look wrong. Yeah. There's... There, there's, it's, it's a no-win situation. It is. A little Either bit. You get the shit Sonic that no one's going to go see the film besides us. People and the poor parents who get drugged to it. Mm -hmm. People who watch it for other people's sakes. It's okay, everybody. We're the critics. Out, yeah, we are out here. We are out here watching the terrible movies for you, the fans. <laughs> Remember yeah. that. We suffer, suffer for you guys. And by we, we watched Endgame and all of its terribleness yep. for you. Joking aside, <laughs> um, we we watched Death Note for you guys. If you guys didn't, Death Note, man. Uh, no, this I, it, like when I watched, first watched the trailer, I was hoping it was going to be a so bad it's good. Mm -hmm. That's what the first trailer made me feel. It made me feel the Batman and Robin vibes <laughs> of it's so bad it's good. Like, it's just, it's so dumb and so stupid, but you can't help but have a little bit of love for how dumb it really is and how not dumb it thinks it is. Okay. If that makes sense. So, fun, hey, I actually own the Super Mario Bros. movie. <laughs> it is one of two <laughs> films I own. I just thought of something, but we'll discuss it later. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but other than that, I don't have anything to add to this trailer. To this to this news around the trailer, to the changes and all that. I don't... Again, I don't think the animators should have to go through crunch, but I also don't think this is a film that is serviceable to a fan base that is, is a super fractured fan base, mind you. Like... It's got, like, three generations of three different styles of gaming generations in there. Uh, yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, so you're never going to appease everyone, and this just went to appease no one. <laughs> That's how I'd put it. Just, no one's happy. Everything sucks. The end. <laughs> That's just... No. Okay. Well, they just want to, to to just do a completely different take on it, which isn't what the three generations of Sonic fans want. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, even Sonic fans don't really know what Sonic fans want. If you look at the community, there's so many generations of Sonic fans who have grown up with different Sonic what? games. Did you watch the Inside Gaming video about Sonic? No, is there one? Watch it. Okay. Yeah, there's one that they talk about how Sonic has survived for lo so long. Given that he's had some absolute 
bombs. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, they talk about how it is. So it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's like there's, there's three different generations to how they discussed it. Um, and this doesn't go to appease any of them. So. Mm -hmm. I have one last bit of movie news and then we'll wrap it up for today, I think. Okay. And the last bit of movie news is Endgame related since we brought it up a little bit. Um, yes! Box office! Uh, yes! Avengers Endgame. <laughs> it deserves it! <laughs> yes, Avengers Endgame has already passed the Titanic in its second weekend. Uh, so, Endgame. It only needs, what, uh, 700. It needs 500 million more now. Yeah, right now, it's. According to when this article was written, which was four hours ago, it was released four hours ago, Avengers Endgame is currently at. Two billion one hundred eighty-eight million six hundred ninety-eight thousand six hundred thirty-eight dollars. Um, worldwide, Titanic earned uh, about just doing quick numbers a hundred one million two hundred thousand less than that, and Avenge, uh, Avatar gross two million two billion seven hundred thousand. So they're about six thousand, just under six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred million. Six hundred million. Yes. They're just under six hundred million away from becoming the highest grossing film ever. And it's and only, only in week two. Weeks. It took Avatar seven weeks to hit two billion. Mm -hmm. So some might say this is a movie to end all movies. Uh, <laughs> and there will be nothing. Some would agree. God. <laughs> this is Endgame is gonna be the current peak of cinema because one it does what endgame did or what avatar did with visual story uh, storytelling it's a boring ass movie i've talked about this mm -hmm. the first avatar is a boring movie and whenever the second and third come out and the fucking sixth um unobtainium man it's just it's a boring fucking film if you watch it it's beautiful it looks cool it's just boring I walked out of the theater with my dad being like, that form was, film was bad, wasn't it? He's like, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I was like, all right, so it's not just me. I'm just not, I'm not just an asshole. All it right, cool. It just looked really cool. Yeah. It did. It, it looked camera, cool. Man. But <laughs> Endgame looks really cool and has a story. <laughs> I mean, I'll definitely agree with a dragon here. I feel like a lot of people our generation saw the movie once and was like, eh, no. Yeah. But yeah. apparently the critics <laughs> out there fucking ate it up and went millions upon millions of times. Because seriously, yeah, like the fact that that. But it took it seven weeks to do that. Mm -hmm. We're over here week two of Endgame, and it's week after, just in weekend two, and it's like, yeah, we're still going strong, yeah. <laughs> barely even breaking a sweat. Like it's just I haven't. Do you been think you'll hit three billion? Three billion, it'll be really close. I'm not sure if it will break three billion now. I think it could. I think it I could think it only due to inflation, but <laughs> that's something that people don't really take into account when it comes to movies. True. Inflation. So don't get me wrong. That's right. why Titanic is still the second most grossing film mm -hmm. until now. Because of inflation. It wouldn't have been if we just went off of straight what it made. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so I I saw something about a new poster for May, but no, I didn't update the poster for May at all. It's still oh, you know what we haven't done. We haven't updated. You haven't set. You haven't updated the one for down below. Oh, the mini May poster. Ah, oh, yeah, you never made a mini May poster. Huh. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got Mewtwo Strikes Back and Pokemon Detective Pikachu, which you can't even read on there. It's a little small. Just really yellow, which yeah. blends into the white. <laughs> yeah, but I can't wait for it. Which we might have a special guest with us next week for that. Maybe, just maybe. <laughs> special to us. Are you really that excited for Detective Pikachu? Yes. There's fucking Trico's boy. But There's Deadpool Trico's. Reynolds. Detective yes. Deadpool. <laughs> also, my elbows are inverted. If you noticed. Yes. <laughs> I guess I did notice. So yeah, 
Next week, it's Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, and Detective Pikachu. So fucking title. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Why not just call it Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back? I don't know. Who's Mewtwo? I don't know. (laughs) Well, (laughs) the dubbed is supposed to make more sense, but it doesn't. No. Or, sorry, the subbed. Subbed, not the dubbed. Yeah. Not the dubbed. But it doesn't help much. (laughs) All right. So, wrong button. (laughs) That one. There we go. All right, so I've got nothing else this week. Do you have anything else you want to talk about, or nah? No, I think I'm good. All right. So, yeah, that's it for us here. This actually was a little bit shorter of a show, unfortunately. It's not a shorter show by any means, but uh, it's a short show, I fear. <laughs> short show in the sense that, like, this, these movies just don't... These movies don't bring a lot to the table. So, you know, hopefully next week we get some movies that bring a little bit more to the table. One of them might. I don't. One of them should. One of them should. The other, the other one. The other one we know is just gonna be there, so we can talk about it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's the first ever Pokemon movie, man. We have to show where the origins of the movie started and where we've gotten to today. Still a fun film, <laughs> and you know what we're gonna be singing. Jigglypuff, Jiggly. <laughs> Damn it. Someone get me a marker. Wait. Too late. I'm kidding. Okay. So, I guess that's it for us here. Hitically <laughs> casual. Eventually, Dev will wake up, baby, to say goodbye. I don't know. But, um, if you liked what you saw this week, hit us with a like, a follow, maybe subscribe if you want. Whatever. It's up to you. Um, <laughs> too beautiful. The chat says I'm beautiful, Dev. Dragon. Thank you for that. But if, oh uh, yeah, so join us next Sunday for another episode of Critically Casual at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Follow us on Twitter! Follow us on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube now. There are commands that normally Deb would do, but he's asleep. Um, if you liked what you saw, we have more. There's always Wednesdays where we have third player optional at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where uh, we talk about, well, not us, but our channel talks about movies and then on, or video games, my apologies. And then on Thursday, we have the Har Har Podcast, where, yeah, um, <laughs> maybe maybe I can do the Twitter command. Let's see. Twitter. Oh, man, I forgot to stick that up. Yeah, you totally did. <laughs> Either way, thank you very much for joining us this week, and we will see you guys next week on... Uh, Yeah, yeah, Pokemon week, I guess, for Critically Casual. (laughs) Bye, guys.